Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, this is a troubleshooting kit that I designed. I designed it initially for Arduino. Uh, it requires 5 volts on the left pin, ground on the right. And uh, when you place a TTL signal, a 5 volt signal on any of these pins, these three pins on the right, something happens. Uh, the second pin from the right activates a green LED through a current limiting resistor. The second, the third pin from the right activates a red LED uh, through a current limiting resistor that's on board. The third pin from the right activates a DC piezo buzzer. It requires very little power because there, it's a transistor activated, so you need just a very, very small 5 volt signal. Uh, and the first pin or second pin from the left is an active high uh, button. So what happens is, is the output where you're, is normally high. When you press the button, the uh, normally high button, which is this one, the output goes low. And this, uh, the, th the third pin from the left is your normally low output. So when you probe that output, the output is normally low until you press the normally low button, at which point the output goes high. So let's power it up and I'll give you, I'll show you how it works. To show you the input conditions, I'm going to place 5 volts on an external wire right here to simulate an output coming from your microprocessor. If I touch it to the second pin from the right, the green LED should light up. If I connect it to the third pin from the right, the red LED should light up. If I connect it to the fourth pin from the right, the piezo buzzer should go off. Now, in order to show you the button input conditions, or uh, the output conditions coming from the normally high and normally low buttons, I'll bring out my oscilloscope. In order to show you the output conditions coming from the normally high and normally low buttons, first I'll probe the normally high output, which is the second pin from the left. It's labeled on the board, but it's very hard to see. So there you go, 5 volts. I press the normally high button, output goes low. I let go of the button, it goes back up to high. If I probe the third pin from the left, which is the normally low output, as you'll see, there's ground, there's zero volts. I'll press the button, and it goes up to five volts until I let go of that button. This is why it's a great troubleshooting device. You can simulate uh, five volts, zero volts, use either normally high or normally uh, low uh, voltage conditions on the buttons. You have three input conditions. Uh, as indicators, a red, green, a red and green LED and a piezo buzzer, a very loud piezo buzzer. Fun kit to put together, very easy to put together, and uh, inexpensive. So uh, what I'll do is now we'll put one together. This is what comes with the kit. You got your printed circuit board, a 2N2222 transistor NPN that drives the uh, piezo buzzer, which is right here, two 470 ohm resistors, three 10K ohm resistors, a 1N4001 diode, a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, a 10 microfarad um, electrolytic capacitor, two monetary uh, push switches, a red LED, and a green LED. So first of all, let's place our resistors. Resistors don't have a polarity, so you can place them in relatively easily. You've got your 10K here, here, here. R3, R4, and R5 or 10K. It's all labeled on the board. R1 and R2 are your 470 ohm resistors. Let's solder those into place. The diode, the two LEDs, the electrolytic capacitor, and the uh, piezo buzzer must be placed in a certain way or else it will not function. The electrolytic capacitor, there is two, are two legs, one long and one short. The longer lead is the positive lead, the shorter lead is the negative lead. It goes right here into the C2 footprint. Now if you see on the top here, you probably can't see it from, from there, but there is a plus symbol on the top here. Place your longer lead in, in the top uh, hole and your shorter lead in the bottom hole. For the piezo buzzer, uh, very similar, there is a long lead and a short lead. Place the long lead in the hole with the positive symbol on it, which is to the left. The diode, as you can see right here, uh, fits in one way as well. Uh, the diode has uh, a positive and a negative. The negative is called the cathode, the positive is called the anode. The negative, the cathode, is uh, indicated by a little white line around the negative side of the diode. You probably can't see it from there, but on the footprint there is a white indicator on the bottom edge of the diode uh, footprint. 
So place the negative with the side on the white line. Match up the white line on the front to the white line on the diode. Lastly, the two LEDs. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can see the footprint from here, but the negative goes on the negative pin, which is the shorter pin, goes on the top for both of them. They're both it's labeled red and green LED. On the footprint, there is a schematic symbol for the LEDs, which is a triangle with a, a line on the end of the triangle. The line on the end of the triangle is the indicator for the cathode or the negative. So again, make sure to place your your small your, your shorter pin towards the uh, engineering shock logo and your longer pin uh, facing the diodes. Solder those into place and we'll solder the last four components. Okay, for the last four components you've got our two buttons. They only really fit in one way uh, and they pop into place. So just line up the buttons with the holes and add some pressure and they will pop into place. The 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor uh, goes into the C1 uh, footprint. Now since it's ceramic, it does not have a polarity. It can go in either way. Don't worry about, about placing that incorrectly. Lastly, you've got your NPN transistor, your 2N2222. Now if you'll notice on the footprint, there's a flat side of the footprint and a rounded side of the footprint. Uh, if you take a bird's eye view of the uh, of the 2N2222, you'll notice that there is a flat side and a curved side. Make sure to line that up. The front side the flat side of the transistor has writing on it. It should say 2N2222. So place them in the holes, solder them, and then we're all done. And we're done. There's your new test board. Great for troubleshooting. I designed it for Arduino, but I'm sure you can come up with a hundred different uses for it. Uh, i got tons of new kits at engineeringshock.com. You can find us through eBay as well, through electroniclessons.com. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, thanks again for watching, everyone. Happy New Year.